Hi guys, welcome to my video about base lifting my 2015 HSE Discovery Sport with the dynamic package that was released in 2017 onwards. Um, it's a simple upgrade. Um, it's going to freshen up the car a little bit, new front grille, new splitters, side vents, door moulds, rear bumper, etc. Just to make the car look a little bit newer. Um, I'm going to be listing part numbers in the description below. I'll also document how I remove front bumpers, rear bumpers, door mouldings and fittings, etc. So that you can follow that procedure uh, to accomplish the same goal. Uh, please like my video um, and if you have any questions please also comment below and I'll try and get back to them as soon as I see them um, and thank you for watching so this is a continuation of my video regarding making my HSE Lux um, into a HSE or placing a dynamic kit on my 2005 uh, HSE Lux so this is one of the first pieces that I've purchased off of eBay. Uh, this is the gloss black back panel, number plate panel. Um, this was a second a second hand part bought from a breakers yard via eBay. It was uh, £40, I believe. Um, comes with the sport badge and the Land Rover badge already in place, which is good because then I don't have to worry uh, about lining those up and sticking them on if I bought an aftermarket part or a brand new part, obviously. That's something I would have to do. So they're in the right places straight from the off. Um, it's also got this spongy strip down either side. Um, I've offered this up to the car already and that looks as though um, you can see it slightly overlaps the side. So that is going to bridge that gap between the edge of this panel and the light panel, the light which will be right next to it. So if you buy an aftermarket part or you buy this brand new, I would suggest either purchasing some spongy strip or trying to find one with some already on it. Um, it's got a slight scratch, um, but all the same, I think that's good value. What I'll probably try and do is I'll, I'll try and do something with this um, to, so it makes it less noticeable. Um, you can see that this is the gloss back. So gloss black is a Navarp, Narvik, black, Narvik, black. Um, hover over the part number for a little bit so you can see it um, but you can see it's general Land Rover part looks like fitting is going to be quite easy I don't know whether this is going to have to be um, chopped off or whether I'm going to have a hole already there because I've not removed the number plate on my HSE Lux yet um, but if not it's got what you can see there was some sticky strip uh, used to hold in place so if I can't use this this screw holder and potentially number plate um, screws then we'll just use the sticky strip so I think that's going to be very easy very easy to fit so that's the first piece so one of the second pieces we've purchased is the front splitter um, or the bottom part of the front bumper so uh, this is like a two or three piece front bumper um, this is again the Navarc black um, grill and this is I don't know if you can see there is a different color so this is the, this is gloss black and this is this is gray from what i can make out this this gray piece is the same as what's currently on my hsc lux uh 2015 hsc lux but we'll see once we actually remove the bumper whether this part is the same this piece the black gloss black piece is most definitely different um and this is part of the the dynamic front bumper um so this will be going on now there are from what i can make out three different styles of bumpers um you have the hse lux you have the, the dynamic and then you have the kind of 2018 onwards dynamic um this is going to be fitted to a hse lux that currently has the um spotlights in the grill to the side to the side so they would be here and here um the newer models they don't have those spotlights so i think that's a, more of a one-piece bumper so that'd be a complete change so what we'll begin to do with this is we use my existing bumper and this will be like the additional splitter onto the bottom so this is just to clarify what i found um as you can see the top picture is of the hse 
bumper. Um, you can see that it's got the fog lights in the side of the bumper um, and that the bottom splitter is is the grey style, um, the older style. Um, it's the same bumper as the dynamic. The only difference between the dynamic and the HSE is that the dynamic has that bottom splitter um, as in addition um, to the standard bumper. So that part is interchangeable. So if you have a HSE, you can buy a dynamic splitter and the dynamic splitter will fit straight onto the bumper. You don't need to buy the whole bumper. With the MY18 and onwards, so the 2018 model and onwards, um, the bumper is different. You can see that you don't have the fog lights in the bumper. They are just open mesh uh, grill areas. And the same, the, the bottom splitter, although it does look fairly similar to the dynamic, you can see that on the right hand side, it has actually got a vented section. Um, so it is a completely different um, bumper than the dynamic and the HSE so if you want to kind of go on with the MY18 you're going to have to find a complete bumper also don't know whether the MY18 bumper is a direct replacement um, for the dynamic or the HSE bumpers so perhaps there's some different fixings or headlights are slightly different because I know in the in the later versions on 2018 onwards the Headlights are different, whether they're a different shape, different fixings, I don't know. So unaware whether that um, MY18 onwards bumper fits, certainly you can do the dynamic upgrade. I'd be interested, um, someone in the comment section. Um, this has been taken off partly for a clean and partly because, I don't know if you can see, some of the plastic welds at the bottom of, of this grill have just kind of snapped off and some of the some of the lugs are slightly loose so i'm going to kind of adjust those um and glue those in place first and if you can if you can see that because the sun is shining in my eyes but um so in some places they've they've kind of snapped and gone a bit bendy in other places where they use the plastic weld they've completely snapped off and it's it's left a bit of a gap so i'm going to glue that um the same can be said in in these corners here so this would be this would be sorry hands over the camera this would be where um this part of the grill which i've buffed up ready to be glued so that would sit on there and then you'd have the four plastic lugs that would fit through here um one that normally be here here and here again those plastic welds have snapped off at one point this is this is kind of what a plastic weld looks like um in four places it looks like they slot in and then burn them um shut um but that's all going to be one piece um, I bought a ready painted colour that's the same colour as my car so it will fit. Um, it looked really rough in the pictures. I was planning to have it resprayed but it's not too bad. Um, it's got a slight scratch down here which I'll probably live with to be honest. Um, my car's not in the in the best of condition as it is anyway so I'll, I'll leave that little scratch maybe just pop a little bit of touch up paint on the on the greyer areas so it can't be seen um mine came with the color-coded um parking sensors black parking sensors so i'll take the parking sensors off the other bumper one of the things that i didn't account for when i purchased this was i thought the whether you call it the toe eye cover or the skid pan that would fit in the bottom of this grill i thought it would be the same as the hsc lux but it's it's completely different um so i've had to buy uh, another skid pan i couldn't find or skid pan or toe eye cover for the front so there you go it is you can tell the difference because this bit is quite a bit larger um than the one on the hse lux and it also it's got um four uh i don't know what you call raised kind of bumps rather than the three um that the hse lux has so that's a good way of telling the difference when you're looking on ebay um if you're not sure whether it would fit um again this this one is a second hand one i got it for a reasonable price it has got quite a nasty gouge in there but you're not going to see it when it's going to be sat flat so um and close to the ground so that's why i'm again i'm not too fussed so that's going to fit in onto the bumper like so this is a different color um actually than the one that i want this isn't the the gloss black color this is like a a gray color i don't know if you can see so i'm going to use this one perhaps temporarily perhaps forever depending if i can find one um, and if i find a gloss black one 
then I'll replace it and I'll put this back on eBay. Um, but this was a separate part. I couldn't, I couldn't find a, a whole bottom splitter with this bit sold, so I had to buy it in two separate bits. Something else to point out is mine comes with these. Mine came with these plastic um, pieces on the side, and this is particularly important. So obviously either side. So this is the continuation of the plastic um, wheel arch trim. Now this is different um, on the Dynamic Sport than it is on the HSC Lux. So try and buy this splitter with the plastic on it. Um, from what I can gather, we're also gonna have to change the trim around the wheels. So this is a continuation of my video on uh, upgrading the HSC Lux to the Dynamic Sport. Um, this is just a quick review of the wheel arches. So up here, this piece, this top piece is the Dynamic Sport piece and the bottom bit is the HSC Lux piece. So it's a direct replacement but I just wanted to show you the difference um, in the bottom of the arch uh, trim. So you can see the dynamic is a lot shorter, whereas the um, HSC Lux is bigger. Um, this is because there's a part that fits over the top of this um, that will um, kind of continue the contour of the side skirts, but uh, we can go into more detail on that. So that's a, just a quick review. You can just see the difference there. Um, as you can see, when we flip it over, uh, fitting is exactly the same. This piece is a brand new Land Rover part. Um, so it's just gonna be a direct replacement, direct pop. Just gotta put the parking sensor in. Make side skirts on, as you can see. Um, and this is just a video to show the difference with the HSE Lux wheel trim and the dynamic side skirts. So you could leave it like this. There is no need to replace these necessarily, but you, if you don't know if you can see, there's a dip in the in the contour here. So it drops off quite, quite substantially. Um, and with the dynamic, when you get the dynamic um, wheel arch, um, it stops here as we've shown. And then there's another piece that continues the contour kind of down. Um, if I flip to the other side, you can see that this is the dynamic sign skirt at the moment. Um, I'm still waiting on these pieces to be delivered, but we can do a comparison video, but you can see that this is now gonna kind of match up the contour um, once that piece is in. Um, and then you've got the side skirts on. These are obviously unpainted at the moment, um, but I've put them on so they don't get damaged less likely to get damaged on the car than they are in my garage. So my dynamic rear bumper has arrived. Um, one of the things I have noticed about it is we don't have, I suppose that'd be the toe eye cover. Um, this bottom panel I've ordered separately. Um, and the, what would you call these? The bumper finishes. I suppose for the for the trim panel um, this will be the, the left hand side I've only got one of these so I'm gonna have to find the other one I might even buy two more because I suspect they're gonna be relatively inexpensive and the clips have broken off um, but this is a, a brand new bumper um, needs to be sprayed um, it's got some light scuffs storage scuffs on the on the black um, what I'm gonna do as well I'm going to purchase two new um, fog lights, uh, rear fog lights, because mine have cracked and they've got water ingress. So that was one of the reasons for upgrading to the Dynamic anyway, is because I was going to have to take my rear bumper off to replace those on the HSE Lux. So I thought, let's just upgrade while we're doing it. So I'm going to get these sprayed um, soon, hopefully. Still need to find the silver exhaust surrounds. Um, got the rear skid plate on order and then I'm also going to need to find the toe eye cover. Um, I think perhaps we're going to have to do something with the exhaust, the physical exhaust of the car because on the Dynamic they have large, um, th these large tailpipes but 
on the HST Lux, they've actually got metal surrounds, um, sorry, on that the exhaust is larger. So we might have to cut the tips off on the <laughs> HST Lux to allow this bumper to fit. Um, that's the only thing I think will be physical modification to the car. So we'll wait and see when we get to that point. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get this sprayed and we'll kind of return on fitting. Like I say, I'm gonna order the, the two fog lights first. So an update received my exhaust finishes. This is the driver's side exhaust finisher. That's the official name for them. Um, this is the official Land Rover part part number for the exhaust finishes. Um, it's two, 229 and 230, so for the exhaust finishes. Um, you can see that that's the, the actual finish, official name for them. Um, in every single diagram I have seen, parts diagram, it shows that these kind of slot into some kind of exhaust um, heat shield of some kind. You don't actually need that for these to fit on the rear bumper. Um, I've spoken to other people that have done a dynamic conversion and they've just literally used the exhaust finishes straight onto the bumper. Um, the exhaust finisher also potentially puts a blanking plate in this section and I'll put like an interlude video to show what I mean. Um, but we're going to need this open so the exhaust fumes can escape because um, as you know with the HSE it's got that round um, exhaust tip. Um, in a previous video I talked about modifying the exhaust. I think that the exhaust tip um, is actually going to hit on this metal finisher so I think we're going to have to kind of cut off that exhaust tip on the HSE. It's probably going to be the only physical modification that we're going to need to do. Potentially you could replace the whole exhaust system um, but I think that's just a bit too extreme for what we want to achieve. I'm going to chop off the, the tailpipe, um, the kind of tailpipe tip. Not going to be touching any of the silencers, so it's not going to scream loud or anything like that. We're just literally just taking off the, the, the finishing tip. Um, as I mentioned, I need to replace my rear fog lights because one of them is cracked. The other one has got water ingress. So I've got my new ones here. I also have this rear um, skid plate stroke uh, toe eye cover which is brand spanking new um, and in Narvik black um, the same as all the other black, gloss black thing. So we also have the, um, the toe eye cover um, for the rear bumper uh, this is this is the part number for it there you go 3238 so this is just to clarify um, the exhaust on the, the the HSE is different to that of the Discovery. You can see the tips on the HSE um, are larger, um, and we're going to need to remove those in order to for it to for the exhaust to fit behind the dynamic uh, bumper. Also, it looks like there are some blanking plates available for the dynamic, which we're not going to be using because obviously we need the exhaust fumes to escape. Um, the exhaust is completely different from the dynamic to the HSE, depending on the model, I believe. Um, also in the, the last picture, um, we highlight the heat shield, um, which is part eight, um, which is what I don't believe we will need. Um, I don't know if that is the blank in plate that is shown in the, on the picture of the black dynamic or whether that is a completely different part. But either way, um, I have spoken to people and they've, they've not used those, so we don't need to use that. Okay, just in my uh, in my office, and we're going to start trying to fit this first piece. So this is the um, back panel, um, number plate panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take off my existing number plate and see if we have to cut off this lug, um, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, number plate removed, and it looks like we have a hole where the is going to fit so someone's just put a bit of tape over this i um, not sure if it comes out of the factory like that but there you go there's the hole um, so that will fit nicely into there going to clean up take the badges off uh, give this a wipe and then we can start fitting it so as you can see it takes badges off etc and it took me a while to get all the uh, number plate sticker glue off and the badge glue um, just made that surface nice and clean with some some alcohol wipes uh, ready to stick this on so this little lug on the genuine part is going to fit up in there um, 
it looks like potentially you could use a screw but I'm just going to use that as like a, a location um, a location point um, there we go um, like so I'm just going to use some double-sided sticky glue as uh, double-sided sticky tape the same um, what would be used to stick number plates on um, to secure that in place uh, first of all I'm going to put the number plate on so um, I don't have to worry about a faff around that um, so I'm going to do that and then we'll come back to it then we go first piece of the dynamic lux is fitted um, I am tempted um, perhaps to put the HSE lux badge back on here somehow um, potentially I don't know um, we'll leave it like that for now um, spare Land Rover badge, spare sports badges I think that looks pretty good come back um, and we will continue with this uh, process so this is a video about how to fit the front bumper but unfortunately for you guys I got a bit hasty um, and ended up fixing it before I'd taken any videos my phone had run out of batteries um, so I just cracked on but I'll try and give you a walkthrough without actually removing it so first and foremost you have the first thing you need to do is remove the grill um, you've got these four there'll be one here one here I've already removed this one one here and one here so these four screws so they just undo and you should be able to take the center popper out and then these will just kind of lift out then um, so you need to remove um, all four of those um, along the bumper along the grill um, and then once you've done that the grill will you, you'll hold the grill and just give it a kind of yank and it will pull out because here and over here um, is where it's attached and if you can see here this is what is holding it in um, at the bottom so that will be how you remove the grill just the four uh, pins along the top and then just pull it out once you've removed that you'll have another four of these um, poppers along the top of the bumper one two three four so remove those um, and then that's that part of the bumper removed so you'll need to remove on the HSE the skid pan the balance underneath this is if we can get underneath we can see um, in the corner there you have um, two bolts either side and then it will be a tug to remove the valance and then underneath that there are four one two three four along that four 10 mil bolts that you need to undo that will release the bumper just there if we go around to the side um you're going to have the same here so there's if we just pull this pull this out or just pull the bumper out which i can't actually get underneath it at the moment but just here uh, there's a there's a bolt um, so you need to release this arch pull the arch away and there's a bolt here underneath this and then furthermore we go to the underside of the car and you can see you've got some screws that hold the bottom of the bumper to the inner wheel arch lining you need to undo the two screws at the end so you don't need to undo the middle one but you need to undo those two screws and once you've done that and this is loose you should be able to pull back the arch lining and roughly about here um, there's another 10 mil bolt on the other side of this arch lining once this is undone you can pull that back and you can get to it it's really easy to access so you've got one on the outside one on the inside once they're all done the bumper should pull away you should just be able to just kind of yank it um, along here and in here it's got some some form of clips that just pull away and the whole bumper will come off once that bumper is off um, you're going to have um, over this side you're going to have a multi-clip which is going to be what connects the wiring loom for the bumper to the fog lights and to the parking sensors so you just need to undo it that side and then also where you've got the um, the washer sprays there's going to be a plaster like a rubber tube 
So just pull the rubber tube off the end of these. If it's a bit stiff, tip a bit of hot boiling hot water over it to loosen them up and then just pull them out. Don't try and remove these. Um, actually physically pull the rubber tubes on either side and you're gonna have to feed that back through the bumper so that bumper comes away from the car. Once it's away from the car, then there'll be a, on the inside of the bumper, you'll have the bumper completely removed. There'll be like a little pin here, which is the same as these. Um, just remove that. It just it holds these the, the, the lower skirt to the bumper. You can remove that and then just, this will just pull away uh, the old version. Same here, it's gonna have to work all the way along because this has got uh, clips all the way up into here. You have to pull that away. Um, you're going to have to uh, undo the or remove the um, the wiring harness because the wiring harness is pinned behind the top of this bumper and then up along on this this the panel the equivalent but you'll see once it's off you just need to feed that through and then swap the wiring harness over and then come back and put it all back on but it's a relatively simple task it took me about an hour and a half i would say to do the grill and the front bumper and swap, swap it all over um if you fast forward through this video you'll see how to remove the rear bumper and it's almost identical um to remove the rear bumper um as it is to remove the front bumper so i've documented that but hopefully this video will give you um the the information you need to remove that front bumper pretty quickly so here we're just going to show how we remove the the bottom side skirts or the bump strips off the doors. This is really simple, but in order to remove them, it's a good idea to have both doors open. That's because there is a lip here. So if you start pulling this off, then you're gonna catch it on the inside lip of the front door. So if we remove the front door, and I'm just simply gonna start pulling. Just grab hold of it, give it a good old tug, and it should come off. Simple as that. There you go. And it's the same for all four. One thing I will say, you probably just want to keep that a little bit loose. Fitting is exactly the same. Just ensure that you've got all of those on. So when you fit these, you need to ensure that that lip here is behind the door. Slide it and then lift up. Make sure some of those are popped in so that we can hang it. And if you see around the other side, this lip then should be attached to the other side of the door. Okay, so this is the dynamic bump strip stroke side skirt sprayed. And this is still with the HSE arch on. I'm gonna do a comparison video now where we're gonna remove the HSE Lux arch and replace it with the dynamic arch and the, the continuation of the side skirt. So to remove the arch, we've got a, um, a star hex bolt here that we need to remove. And then it's just uh, pop all the way around, similar to the bump strips. One thing to, to notice if you've, if you've got the park assist, then you're gonna have a, a uh, parking sensor in the arch when you pop that off obviously don't pull it too hard because you don't want to to disturb the wires too much in here um i tend to just pop the parking sensor out once we pulled that out actually i'll do that now so we can pull that out if you see we just fold the page back just pop it out that way so that it's still attached to the wire that way you're not disturbing the wires then you can just pull the remaining arch out. I'll get my posi drive and do that and we can fit the other arch. There we go. Arch is off. We have this small piece that fits in here um, and allows the arch to go back on. I've got to put the clips back on this because I took them off for it to be sprayed. So that piece sits in um, and allows the arch to go back on which we will do now. There we go, that's the difference with the full dynamic arches on and the dynamic piece at the bottom. So then you can determine whether you actually want to leave the arch in place from the HSE 
or do the full kit. That will probably save you about £80 a side if you don't fit the arches in that piece. Okay, you can see there's my rear bumper, it's all been sprayed. Um, one of the first things we need to do is remove the lights. You can see there's a fixing here on the bumper, which is going to be up around here behind this light. Access wise, we can actually get to that light without removing that. So I'm just going to undo that now. Screw comes out. I even used a very, very small flathead screwdriver for that, but you can see where it was originally in that hole. There's a clip. Push up on that clip and the light should pop out. On the driver's side, um, we should be able to get to that screw there just by popping off that grill. Again, it just kind of slides on and pops off. So no screws needed to remove that. Heater matrix is behind there, or the heater blower for the rear seats is behind there, but we should be able to just get a flathead screwdriver and then pop that little clip out. And then we should have the other rear light out. Okay, rear lights out both sides. Really simple. Um, just a really simple connection there just to undo. And you've got the one bolt here and you can also have to remove this lug here which should just pull out there we go it's just uh, one of those okay we've removed these pull strips here and the um the screwdriver there um the next step is i'm going to move to removing this panel here which if you can see the car let me just flip the camera there it's just two flathead bolts either side okay with the flatheads removed um this panel now should pull. probably gonna be a bit tight there we go again same clips bit of a yank that's going to expose the bumper bumpers bumper bolts um Looks like there's two, um, three, four. Um, the good thing is we've got this other bumper that we can look at. We can see that, yeah, we've got four bumper holes uh, on there. Um, so we'll remove those, there'll be a 10 mil. Okay, with those bolts now removed, we move around to the side, we can see that we've got a bolt here. I suspect we also have something holding on the arch, so we need to remove these two down here, separate the bottom of the bumper from the inner wheel arching. Mist is in there, so you've got the two at the bottom and the one there, and that looks to be all that holds that on. Um, this just pulls away from the clips there. Um, I didn't need to undo this bottom bolt here, if you can see, um, it was just the two Phillips. Um, I wasn't able to get a screwdriver in there, but luckily I've got like a, a Phillips for the ratchet end that just fits in. With all that undone, just pulls away. We just have this one clip here that we just need to undo, which is all the parking sensors. So there we go, and now we're away. Um, I'm going to remove all of these. These pieces of tin, I'm going to replace them on the rear bumper. As I've already said, I've got uh, new fog lights, so I'm going to fit those um, to the inside of the new bumper before I need to pull off this um, and feed it around the new bumper with all the new parking sensors. So when I'm going to remove in this, I'm going to be making an effort to, to try and get the screws behind that and pop them off rather than yanking it because I don't want to disturb the um, these wires. Um, make sure that it goes back on the same way as well. Um, so I'm going to get to taking this off and we'll catch up with you in a second. The exhaust, as you can see, that's actually hitting, hitting on the bumper there, which is preventing um, that from on properly um, so I'm gonna nip that off take the bumper off nip it off so I've had to cut the, the tips off um, both sides grind 
just show you the uh, what well, I cut off. There we go. Just the actual tip itself. So, okay, bumper is back on. Um, one thing I would note is um, so the equivalent of these two bolts on the dynamic bumper didn't line up for me. Um, so I haven't got those two centre bumpers, two centre bolts in the bumper. Doesn't seem to make any difference to the way that the bumper hangs. So yeah, more than happy. Um, I've had to glue these on. That's why that's there. Um, I've taken these off to get them sprayed. So I'm just using a bit of resin to, to stick those back on. Um, still waiting on one bumper finisher. That's going to be arriving tomorrow. Um, so you can only see it with the, the single bumper finisher. Um, just to get a little bit of a perspective from the exhaust side of things. That's why I've had to cut the tip because it would, the exhaust wouldn't fit behind there. Um, these are good clean. 